Welcome to Hallie's Creations. We are going to do six different video tutorials today. The first one is this cork wreath. What I like about this wreath is that it's done by basic materials that you can pick up at the Dollar Tree and Michaels. We're going to thin out a napkin and wrap this foam wreath and you can do any size of wreath you want with this it just really depends on how many corks you have so we're going to jump in here get our Mod Podge going and I will talk you through it I'm Hallie and thank you for joining Hallie's Creations where I love to just make neat stuff and share the process with you down in the comments below you can um, put suggestions of different things that you may want to learn how to make so on this one here, I did this project a while ago, so I thought I would do a voiceover on it and just kind of talk you through the six different items just to kind of give you an introduction of all the different things I make here on my channel. So here down in the left, you'll see the different wreaths that I have made. Most of them are posted on my channel, but not all of them. And uh, it kind of just takes you through and shows you how to do it. And you would find that on my playlist. So here we're just taking the um, thinned out napkin and wrapping the, the wreath form. It's not going to be perfect, so don't try to make it perfect. That's what gives it character. And you're also going to be adding the corks and the flowers and, and such to it. So it's okay if it's crinkled up and such, because it will be. <laughs> it's not going to come out super smooth. So this is a one-inch brush. Um, again, most of my items I use, I pick up either at Hobby Lobby, Michael's, um, Amazon, Ed Joann's, if you can believe that, has quite a selection as well. Jo Joann's, if I remember right, is a sister's um, store to Michael's. And as I've shared before, you're going to um, pick up your supplies and stuff after the holidays. That way you get them at a better price. And then you can just kind of project what you're going to use throughout the year. So here, um, the floral form that I have is one of those forms that you buy for the little bridesmaids and such for weddings. It's a headband um, floral thing. I opened it up and I left a gap on it. And here's why. Because we're going to add the bow there. So it's going to um, give it that space where it's not all clunky on there. It'll lay nice and smooth and blend in with the wreath. So what you're going to do is you're going to willy-nilly, <laughs> you're just going to put the corks on as you visually see where you want to put them on. So just glue them on nice and um, thick and that way they won't fall off. Now here's a little note. If you live where it gets really super hot <laughs> and you're going to hang this outside, your corks are going to fall off because um, the glue will heat up. So this is more of an indoor wreath. Or you need to use the Gorilla Glue that's designed to be a little bit more extra strength. Also, now that you probably have flowers that you've hung and dry after Valentine's Day, and you're going, what am I going to do with these? I don't want to throw them away. Well, here you go. Here's an answer to your question. A solution. Um, these flowers are given to me by my niece a few years ago. I hung them up. I sprayed them with the clear lacquer as they dried. Not, I didn't wait for them to dry all the way. I spritzed them just before they were dry, and then I spritzed them again hanging up, and then before I used them, I gave them one more good spray and let it dry, and that way they didn't fall apart too bad while I manipulated them and used them and put them onto the wreath. So for me, I have um, the memory of her sending me these beautiful flowers just out of the blue for no reason, which really surprised me. Thank you, Wendy. It was so sweet. And I made put them into this wreath here. So now what you're going to do is, you know, all those um, leaves that you have and loose end pieces that you have from the different projects that you've made. If you do have that, remember I've told you to do that. Now you can take those and randomly glue those leaves and the different little tiny florals and stuff into this wreath. So you're incorporating your bits and pieces from the other projects that you've done. And then we're going to jump over here pretty quick and we're going to make the bow. And this is a standard bow that I've taught you how to make throughout the different projects. But we'll go over it again for all the new people that just tuned in. So just remember if you like what you see, there it is before we put the wreath, um, the bow on it. 
Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notify. If you don't hit notify, but you subscribe, you're not going to be notified when new postings come up. And I'm back in my studio and such. So now is the time um, where I'll start putting new pro product out and everything. Here, what I did is I took six different videos that I've done in the past. They are on my playlist individually but I incorporated them into one video as a collection I do have a collection playlist so if you wanted to go on to Hallie's creations and check out the different playlists that I have you're welcome to do that and it'll show all the different projects that I can show you how to make and mainly how I teach through my tutorials is I just share the process with you as I'm making it some of them I do the talk over like I am on this one. Some of them I'll pop in and hey, and then some of them are just visual right there. So they're just um, different ways that I do my videotaping. Um, it's a learning curve for me. I've been doing this for four years now. So it's I'm hoping I'm getting better as I'm doing this. <laughs> That's my goal. <laughs> so um, you'll have different styles of videotaping. So here we're just doing the three loops uh, back to the, hello squirrel, we're, <laughs> we're doing the bow now. And what I did is I looped that three times. And remember what I said, when you make your bunny ears, you kind of fold it up, find your center, and then you're going to either use a zip um, tie or a pipe cleaner. And then you're going to twist and fluff and twist and fluff. Be aggressive with your bows and get in there and don't be afraid to twist and fluff them out because that's what gives them character. Here we're tying a knot just simple and then we're going to tie that onto the bow to make it give that visual effect that you actually tied that bow but this is more secure doing it this way it's not going to fall off um, and fall apart down the road because you've put that um, pipe cleaner or the zip tie in there first and then now you're giving that visual that it's knotted so we're going to do that we're going to twist and fluff this bow here has three um, loops for each color so it's a total of total of six different loops that we have on here. We left the um, fluffy part of it out because we're going to trim that down. So we, we just left it hanging out there. So now that we've created a bow, we're gonna attach it to our floral form. And we're just twisting that pipe cleaner that we did the bow with onto the form. If you wanna put a little loop back there, you so can to hang it. And now we're just gonna twist and fluff and make it fluffy and trim it down and we'll be done with this wreath so this was basically materials again just to recap dollar tree form napkin was just any pretty napkin you find that you want to use mod podge you can get pretty much anywhere and then the flowers are from um, a special present to me and then the spring of flowers that we did around was from michael's and the cork wreaths Hey, do a shout out to your friends who drink or even on Facebook saying, hey, I need corks for a project. You'll be surprised how many people will say, come and get my corks. That's how I get mine. <laughs> and we are going to jump on to the next chair here. <clears throat> Remember too, you can make that any size you want. So now we're going to do a jewelry share because I wanted to show you some of the different things that we make on Hallie's Creations on my little channel here. So one of the things I suggest very strongly is get yourself a jewelry board. They're great and they're not that expensive. So get that, get your jewelry making tools. Um, it'll just make it so much easier for you. Where do I get my jewelry board, Hallie? I got mine at Michael's, <laughs> but you could get them pretty much anywhere, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Amazon, but make sure you have a, a, a good size jewelry board. And that way too, if you get called away or you have to step away, you haven't lost your place. So here what I'm going to do is lay out the beads and I always lay them out from the center to the end. And here's why, because, because I can. No. <laughs> because it makes it easier. Um, you're gonna get your center, you're gonna have your um, pin it in the middle, and then you're gonna build it out from there. Now remember too, when you're making jewelry or anything, don't worry about what other people think. Don't be asking people their opinion because you know, you're doing it to relax, to have fun, and don't put that stress on yourself. You just don't need to do that. So just have fun, get in there and just do your thing. 
Um, here I'm showing you the crimping tool for, you can see how that works. And I will try to show you how these different tools work throughout. What I suggest with this being a video is if you're having a hard time following, just pause it, take a better look, rewind it. It's okay. So here I'm counting off my beads because I'm a little funny that way. I like things to be balanced and even. So we're counting off the beads, making the design that we like. And I'm putting the um, smaller beads towards the end. You'll, you'll notice that it's the heavier beads in the front. And I actually have heavy beads mixed with the smaller beads to give it some dimension. And then I put the small beads at the end for the toggles we'll go through. Because otherwise they won't loop through the... Um, the toggles and they'll be clunky and been there done that you don't want to have to restring your necklace so I'm putting the pennant in the middle and this is just a simple teardrop halawite pennant um, I drilled the hole with my Dremel tool because when I bought it I didn't realize it didn't have a hole in it but that's okay so down here on the right is to show you some of the different jewelry that I've made some are on my playlist and you'll see that on Hallie's Creations. And I have a playlist for jewelry. Not every single piece is on here, but the technique of how to do the different pieces are most definitely on there. I have the stretch bracelets as well as the um, toggles. So it shows you different ways that you can make your jewelry. So now we're going to do um, the toggle connector on one end. So that's one way I start is I loop through my toggle and I do the barrel crimp and then I'll crimp it down and then I'll take the wire and I'll run it through two or three beads and then I'll trim it down I don't trim it down at the crimp and then what you want to do is you want to take that crimping tool put it on the toggle I mean on the crimp the barrel bead <laughs> the, the, the barrel tube and then we're going to um, crimp it down it's pretty cool so that took a little, you know, practicing for me to figure out how to do that. That's what works best for me. So you have the toggle, then the tube, loop it through, crimp it nice and tight, and leave just a little wiggle room for the toggle, for the wire can have just a little flexibility. And then you're going to take the wire, run it through two or three beads, and then trim your wire down. And here's why I do that. One, you're not crimping your um, wire so close to the crimping tube that through wear and time and, you know, using using it, wearing it, it wiggles out. It gives you a little bit of wiggle room there. If you do notice it starts getting loose on you, well, you have the tools. So you can just pull it tight and crimp it again. So there you go on that. That's my little trick. So here we're just going to crimp it. Make sure it's nice and tight. A nice squeeze crimp sometimes I'll crimp it a couple of times just make sure that tube is really snug and secure and then I will string up the necklace and I'm doing it on both sides there on these toggles that I picked up for this necklace they're really pretty I picked them up off of Amazon and I have to be honest with you I was really struggling for a while there because when I make my jewelry I like to have quality and I was like I need I want to find gold or silver or, you know I want to have something that is you know the real deal and I found these toggles and they're beautiful no, they're not, they're not silver or gold, but they're quality. So you can get those at Amazon. You can also find things like that at Michael's and Joe Ann's actually and Hobby Lobby and, you know, jewelry making stores. So don't get caught up where you have to have gold and silver and stuff, especially when you're first learning how to make it. But my beads and such, I don't use plastic beads. You can if you want. Um, there are some real pretty ones out there. I like to use the natural stones, the pearls, and the glass beads and such. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, um, now that I've made the necklace, we did the layout, and then we crimped both ends of it. We put the toggles on and such. And I promise you in the future I'll give you better shots on that. <laughs> Learning curve. 
but here I'm using the, the wire cutter. I use the flat inside of it. You'll notice it has like a V dip in it. If you want to get really close to the wire, you want to use the flat side of that. That's why they're made that way. The V dip is when you don't want to get too, too close. So run your wire through and then make sure that it is nice and snug, but not too snug where you don't have a little wiggle room there. On this necklace here, what I chose to do is put a tail on the back end of it, a little dangle. So you're going to see that as well. So we've made the necklace and now I'm going to go through and make a dangle on the back of it. It just looks really pretty hanging down the back of your neck when you do that. So how I did that is I ran that through the back by the toggle. Did another crimp, tube, the tube um, crimp, for it's nice and snug. Again, ran the wire down a few of the beads to make sure when I clipped it that it's not clipped too close to the toggle. And I'm going to add a couple of feather charms on here and do the same process at the end of it. We'll do the barrel crimp and run it up through the back. But here you can see it on the lower left how it turned out. And you'll notice too how I'm using the flat nose pliers to pull those wires. It just gives it a little bit more snug where you can grab it and really do it well. It's pretty easy to do. It's, it's not that hard. It's a little intimidating when you're first learning how to do it. But what I like to share is, you, well, first off, get out of your head. <laughs> That's what my husband always says. But just enjoy it and play with it. At worst case scenario, you cut the wire and you restring it and you try again. I've done that. Been there, done that. I've reworked them several times just to get it the way I wanted it. So the trick for me, what I've learned through the process is I use the barrel um, crimp tubes. They're easier. Then I'll put um, the smaller beads towards the end of the toggles for when I am running the toggles through. I have that little wiggle room to get the toggles connected. And I use the, the wire, I pull it up through two or three beads before I trim it down. So those are the, the key issues that I do um, that just have really worked well for me. And you do want to leave just a little wiggle room when you're doing your um, crimping to your toggles uh, for they, they have a little flexibility for the not so, so tight and taut. And here again, we're using the flat nose um, wire pliers here. And just those just really help you get a good grip on the wire before you pull it in and get it just the way you want it. So there you go. Little crimped, crimp it tight there. And this necklace is pretty much done. So I will um, let you just watch this. And then I will be back when we do the third tutorial here which is coming soon. Don't forget to subscribe and set your notified if you are enjoying this particular share. If you don't set your notified, you won't be notified. <laughs> so here on this one, this is a quick little share. This is just showing you how you can make that basic bridal bouquet holder a little special, a little different. 
with Mod Podge and a little bit of lace and ribbon. This was my daughter and um, granddaughter's bridal bouquet that she and my other granddaughter designed over FaceTime <laughs> and then they um, handed it off to Grammy to put together for them. So we painted the handle black because her wedding was um, black and red. And then this lace here I found actually, I think I got this out in the state sale or yard selling or something, but I saw saw the fabric. I was like, oh my goodness, I could so use that. So you never know where you're going to find those great finds. So we're just going to cut this lace to fit the bouquet holder. We're going to mod podge it on, let it dry, and then trim it up and add a really pretty bow to it. And then um, I will be doing the bouquet for the wedding. But this one here, I'm just showing you how to do the bouquet holder. The actual bouquet, how to do that one, is on another share, <laughs> another tutorial. And that would be found on my playlist on Hallie's Creations. And there's several different um, Blora bouquet shares that I do have on my channel. So if you want to check those out, just go to Hallie's Creations, which the link and everything is right here if you're watching this. <laughs> and then just... Yeah, I'll scroll down the different playlists that I have, depending on what you're interested in looking at a tutorial for. That one there that you're seeing, those were on my playlist. You can actually see how to do those. These ones are not. <laughs> These are ones I've made in the past before I had my channel, and I thought I would just pop them on here to show you. But the technique is there, so you can see how to do it. So here we're just trimming it down, gluing it down with the Mod Podge. If you want to use regular glue, you, you can, but I'm a big fan of Mod Podge. And here's why. <laughs> it doesn't dry and crack, and it does not turn yellow. So far, I have not had that issue, and it dries clear. So that is why I like to use the Mod Podge. It's a little expensive, but it's okay because you get what you pay for. Isn't she such a cute little bride? But that was for her wedding. So we have the one inch brush that we're using. We picked up at the Dollar Tree. Mod Podge it on there nice and thick. Gonna let it dry and trim it down. Super easy to do. And the bridal bouquet holder, you can pick up pretty much any bridal floral shop or I grab these up from Amazon. A little um, trick that I do if you are making bouquets, it, take one bouquet holder, always have two, but take one that's plain and then make your form on it and everything. Get the idea of how you want it and then you're going to transfer that onto the one that you did the bling bling for that you have the nice one because if you put flowers in and out of the bouquet head you're going to break down that foam and then it's not going to work as well because it's going to it's going to fall apart <laughs> so you want to make sure that you have it how you want it before you actually glue it down into the bridal bouquet and yes i said glue so you want to use your hot glue gun and glue it down into the bridal form. That way it doesn't fall apart on you during the ceremony and throughout the day. So here we just did the three loop bunny ear, put the um, bow on there, we're gonna fluff it out, and I left the tails long on it, and then we're gonna trim it up, and we're done. That's It's that easy, it's that easy, it's not that hard. Um, but this is kind of a unique, different design. <laughs> but this is this is what my girls put together. Now we're going to jump on to decorated wine glasses. This one here is a little bit longer than the other two shares that I've done because there's more detail to it. So much fun to do, though. But it does take a little time because you, you want to have drying times between the different processes that you do. So we're going to, again, thin out the napkin down to the, the final layer. Most napkins are two to three ply. 
So get that pulled apart and the way you do that is you just get it wet a little bit and you can just take it between your fingers and give it a little rub there and eventually it's going to start separating and then you just peel it apart. Cut out the pattern that you want to put onto your glass. It is going to go on a little crinkly. That's okay. Don't get caught up in trying to smooth every crinkle out and if it rips and tears as you're putting it on, that's okay because we're also going to be painting and gold flaking on this. So there's more to it. So those little rips and tear spots, that's just going to tell you where to put the gold flanking and the the little white paint and such. So it's it's okay. Don't get caught up with trying to be perfect on it. Just relax and have fun with it. Now you'll see here too that I have two different Mod Podges sitting on the table. I am going to tell you to use the dishwasher Mod Podge. I should have took that other one off the table. That's my bad. That's kind of misleading. I apologize, but it's my work table. <laughs> Use the dishwasher Mod Podge, that way you can enjoy these glasses um, for the years to come. If you use the other Mod Podge, it will fall apart <laughs> because when it gets wet, it reactivates. So don't, don't use the regular Mod Podge. Please don't do that. So here we're using the dishwasher Mod Podge, and yes, it's a little bit more expensive, but it goes a long ways, and you, I still have that bottle. And I do a lot of different um, crafts and stuff, so it lasts for a while. The trick to the Mod Podge is I put a plastic bag and then I put the lid back on it. So I kind of seal it up pretty good. So here we're just painting the dishwasher Mod Podge on and then we're gently applying the napkin art. And then we're going to set that aside and let it dry for a little bit after we put that on. Again, like I shared, don't worry about it if it tears or if it has crinkles in it because we're going to come back and work, rework it. So see this little sponge applicator? You can pick those up at the Dollar Tree for a dollar, 25 now. Everything's going up, but just go in and you're just gonna gently dab, dab, dab. And the reason we're doing that is for two reasons. One, we're sealing it nice and, you know, seal, sealing it nice and tight. And then we're also giving it a frosty effect. So when it dries, and I'm doing the entire glass, when it dries, and no, you don't do the inside. <laughs> you don't have to do the inside. But when it dries, it will have that frosty effect on it. Now here I'm showing you the, the gold flakes that I'm using on this glass. I have discovered since then that I really like the sheets. I mean, the flakes work great too. Don't get me wrong, they do. But I really like the sheets because I can put my glue on there willy-nilly, however I want, lay the sheet over it, pat it where it'll dry and then when I rub it off it's perfection so and it's not as messy my grandson loves to play with the sheets <laughs> he goes let me play with the gold sheets Grammy I want the gold sheets so the sheets are really cool and you can get them in gold silver rose gold copper so there's varieties of, of these flakes that you can do so you're not locked into one particular one and I picked those up at Amazon. Everything that you see on my shares, I have an Amazon profile page. Now I do not have the links that where I get a kickback or anything because as I've shared before, that's not what I'm into this for. I just have the Amazon profile page for you can go on and see what I'm using. So there is a page and it's down in my descriptions that you can click on, it takes you to Holly's Creations. And you can see the different um, supply lists that I have for the different shares. So for the painting shares or the glass shares. And you can click on that. And you can see the different products that I've bought and that I use in my um, shares. Now down the line, I will probably get affiliated links. Let's be real. Need to make a little money to pay for all of this. But right now, that's not where I'm at. Right now, it's like I'm just doing this as I've shared before. I got started a lot as a lot of people did during COVID and it just gave me something to do. It took off and I did it for friends and family. I was just doing FaceTime shares for the kids had something to do during, you know, lockdown time. 
and uh, my teachers and my family and friends said, Holly, keep doing it. So it's like, well, oh, okay. And I kind of prayed on it, and I really felt led that this was something the Lord wanted me to do. And I really have fun doing it for you. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. No, it really is. That's, that's how I got started. But I am to the point now where I have another channel where I do biblical shares, it's life shares and stuff like that. And it has really, things have taken off and I just, I am going to do affiliated links eventually, just a little heads up. But right now there's no affiliated links or anything. I'll probably get a merch shop going and stuff like that too. But it's all a process. It takes time. Right now, my main focus is just showing you how to make neat stuff and having fun in the process. I have my own studio now, so I can go out there. I can film different um, projects for you, and we can make things together, and it's just fun. It's, and I try to, you know, I'm learning a lot of the different editing techniques and stuff. So as I grow, hopefully you grow as well, and I'd love to see us grow together and learn how to do all these different projects and stuff. If there's a project that you're interested in, put a comment you know, put it down in the comments or send me an email and let me know. That would be great. Um, I, I try, I try new things all the time. As I, I just YouTube it and learn how to do it. <laughs> so here I'm showing you how I did the bottle to match the glasses. That is on my channel, so you can see how to do that. The glasses. All I simply did was just to recap. We. Um, use the dishwasher Mod Podge, we did the napkin, then we let it dry, then we went back and we did the glue, outlined it in different places, put the foils on it, brushed the foils off, and then now we're going to go in and we're going to do a white paint outline. This is what they look like before we do the white paint outline. This is with the gold foil. You'll notice how this paintbrush has a really long head on it. That gives it those real fine line swirls and such. You can do it without that if you don't have that. You can even use a paint pin if you wanted to. For me, and you, did you just see how that one piece of paint just kind of globbed down there? And I just, I'm just rolling with it. Just don't, don't feel like you got to go back and fix things. Just roll with it. Um, it's, it's a, as what, what would Bob Ross say? It's a happy mistake. <laughs> it's all good. Art is art. Just have fun with it. Enjoy the process. And we're just going to put some fine um, white lines on here, some little tiny white dots just to give it some character and some depth and dimension. And then we're pretty much done with this. Again, like I shared, that bottle is under the bottle art shares, and there's several different bottle arts that I have on that playlist. So check that out. One of the reasons why I chose to do the collective share was to show you the different things. And this is just a taste of the different things that I have on my channel. I believe at this point I have over 500 videos and shorts. And so there's quite a selection that you can pick from at this point. And it's continuing to grow and the video um, taping is getting better, better, I hope. For you it is, that's my goal, that's what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> learning curve <laughs> but we're all learning together uh, and uh, it's just fun it's just fun and there's just a lot of stuff there that you can jump into and see what, how to do I do glass painting as well palette painting with oils and acrylics three-dimensional painting if you're uh, watching this on Facebook don't forget to like and follow. You can also, once you like and follow on my page on Hallie's Creations on Facebook, I can send you an invite for my private Hallie's Creations creative group where all my postings go first before it goes out to Facebook. It's just a little bit more intimate. And if you wanted to share and post things that you've made, 
you can on how on Hallie's Creations Creative Group. So here now, after it's dried, you got to let it dry first. We're going to go through and we're going to do a second seal. So we're taking that sponge, doing the entire glass, and it's letting it dry for 23, 25 days. I say a month, and now you can use it. Hand wash it. Treat it like a baby. So here now we're jumping into the um, beachy theme type bouquet. You saw that earlier when I did the handle. Now we're doing the holder. We're doing um, the beach theme here. This is a Flasky bridal bouquet holder. You'll see that little box in the back there. I mod podge that with the napkin technique that I showed you on the wreath earlier on. And this is just a little reminder. Don't forget to subscribe and set your notify if you're enjoying these shares where you would be notified when new shares come out. So here what I did is I mod podge the napkin onto the bridal bouquet holder, added some bling bling so there's some pearls and such. And now we're doing the bow. We're doing the three loop bow, keeping it simple. And you'll see why as we make this bouquet holder, I kept it simple. There's enough going on with the bouquet and the holder and such. So just a three loop. Remember too, when you're doing your bows, if you have two sided um, ribbon, you want to wrap it, not zigzag it. You want to make sure that when you pull it apart, you're going to have that pretty side showing. You'll see what I mean when you do try to do that and it doesn't work. Just remember if you zigzag it versus looping it depends on how you're going to get that finished product. So we're using a zip tie on here to get the center and make little bunny ears. You can do it with a zip tie or the pipe cleaner, whatever you have available. I like the zip ties because they this easy peasy. Just get the small ones. And then we're going to just tie this to the bouquet holder. You'll also notice too, as we're making this bouquet holder, um, this actual bouquet, I have leaves hanging down on it, but the finished product does not have the leaves hanging down. I did it both ways for you could see how to do it either or. Myself personally, I like it with the full fluff of the flowers, like a dome. And remember too, when you're cutting your flowers, you don't want to cut them too short. Measure twice, cut once. And if you're thinking you need an inch, cut it an inch and a half. <laughs> cut them longer because you can always trim them down. Once you cut them too short, it's all over. So this is the Flasky bouquet holder. And you'll notice too how I pop the top on there. You're probably going, what is she doing? This is actually designed by Flasky for the bride to be able to have a beverage while she's holding her bouquet. There's a little straw there. You could also use it to throw your keys and your lipstick and whatnots in there. Um, you don't have to use it for a drink holder. You can take the straw out and just use it as a secret place to put your items. I like that idea better. Um, that way you have your essentials that you need throughout the day right with you. So here's what I was talking about with the leaves hanging versus with the bouquet not having it hanging. I think it's prettier without. But I wanted to show you both ways for you to know. So don't cut your flowers too short. Always cut them a little bit longer than you think you need to have. Nine times out of ten, you're going to be okay. If you cut them to where you think you're going to need them, unless you're an experienced floral person that knows what you're doing, you're probably going to cut them too short. So <laughs> don't do that because it's, it's just so sad when that happens. Another thing, too, I wanted to remind you earlier I shared on the other um, bridal bouquet holder is make your bouquet on a separate inexpensive bouquet holder and then transfer that on to the actual bouquet holder you're going to be building the bouquet on. Remember too that you want to glue your flowers into your um, styrofoam. That way it just gives up that extra reinforcement to last throughout the day. This thing is going to get tossed around, laid down, picked up, and used and abused. So you want it to be pretty sturdy. 
So I am dipping the tips into glue before I actually put them into the holder. I'm using the actual holder that I'm building the bouquet on because I've already done this so many times I kind of know where it's going. But as you're learning, I would really suggest doing it on an inexpensive bouquet holder first. That way you could take them out and transfer them into your nice bouquet holder. So we're just simply going to dip and build the bouquet out. Another thing too, a little trick, your center of your bouquet when you're doing the dome bouquets is you want that a little bit higher. You don't want all your stems cut the same length. Your center is going to be higher and then you're going to cut it down just a smidge and then down just a smidge more. And then that, what's a smidge, Hallie? <laughs> That's, this is say about, you're going to go an inch and a half to an inch to about three quarters. You're just going to just a little bit each time to make it, give it that nice round look. Plus when you're doing the styrofoam and you have a really nice styrofoam head, you, you have that little room that you can push it down in a little bit more. But just remember, <laughs> once you cut them too short, it's really hard. I mean, you can do it with floral tape. You can add the stem to it, but you don't really want to do that. You want to kind of try true and blue. You'll also notice here how I have the different um, flowers, the blue, the, tur the teal, and the turquoise, and the white, and the cream. You'll notice how the beads match the flowers. I bought nail polish. <laughs> yeah, I did. At the Dollar Tree, actually. <laughs> I bought nail polish, and I painted the beads to match the flowers that match what the bride had requested for her wedding. So that way she would have the nail polish for her wedding as well and her wedding party if she wanted to. So we're just going to build this out for a little bit and you can watch the process. And just a little reminder, if you are looking for a product where I, where, where, where does Hallie get all this stuff? <laughs> I know not everybody lives in the United States that watches my channel, so but Amazon's everywhere. So you can pick up a lot of the items from Amazon, as well as Michael's and Hobby Lobby. Pretty much any floral store will have these items for you. And that way you have that versatility. I would suggest using a nice quality flower. I really don't use the Dollar Tree flowers for bridal bouquets because I want a high quality flower. So what I do is I wait for the holidays to go come and go and I will go in there and I will buy up my whites and my different colors that I can get after each different holiday. And that way I have it going forward. And then when I have to buy the custom flowers like the teal flowers here, then I just go and buy them when they're on sale. And, but I buy the high quality, nice looking florals. If you're going to put the work into it, get something nice. Do, do it with good materials. But you don't have to pay the retail price that you walk in and see them at. Wait for them to go on sale, use those coupons, and buy them after the holidays and such. Just kind of project what you think you're going to need. And just build up a little inventory. Here too is I'm putting the leaves and such in and remember how I've shared before when you're making your projects hang on to your extra materials that way you can use them in other projects going forward. So the next layer here now that I have the height is I'm going down just a little bit and cutting it just a little bit shorter to put it around the base. And I just kind of squished them in there and getting them in there really good. And then I'll go back and I'll fluff out everything. Uh, Baby's Breath is a really good filler, but they also have different flowers that you can use that are fillers as well. It doesn't always have to be Baby's Breath. Just to give you that 411 on that. You can use the small little accent flowers and stuff. This one here I'm using shells. And I'm going to show you how I glued the shells to... Um, actually wood spears the little tiny spears that you use for when you make shish kebabs and things like that you can pick that up at the dollar tree for a dollar 25 and i cut them down and i glued uh the shells to that and then i just glued them into and throughout 
the bridal bouquet. So it has shells, it has the accent beads that are painted to match the flowers in here as well. Make sure you have some good floral cutters. Don't use your scissors. You'll ruin them. <laughs> um, so make sure you have the proper tools when you're doing this. You can pick those up at Lowe's, Home Depot, any hardware store. Um, True Value, Harbor Freight. <laughs> Again, Harris is showing you down on the left some different bridal bouquets that I have made. Some are on my channel where you can go into the playlist and see how to make them. Some are not, <laughs> but the technique and everything is there. And as I make more bridal bouquets and such, they'll be posted. Pretty much going forward, anything I make, I record for I can share that process with you. And I'm always making neat stuff. I, I love making stuff and then blessing people with it. So here I'm showing you how you have a gap there. No, 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 you don't want gaps. You want to fill everything in. You want to put your greenery in there and your flowers and such. I'm using just an actual flower base to um, use as my stand to build this out. So you can use things you have around the house to help you make things a little bit easier for you. The flasky flowers you can find on Amazon. And I think I have them on my link down below in my descriptions as well. If not, just Google Flasky Flowers and you can find that. They're about $20. They're a little expensive, but then you also, it's different, it's unique. So, so now we're going to add our accents into it. And just kind of weave those through the flowers where they pop out really pretty. And I will be back. So here I'm showing you how we're putting the shells in. Remember how I shared we glued them onto a wood skew, cut them down to the height that I want them to show in the floral arrangement. And you just randomly place them where you think they should go. Add your fillers. I'm using baby's breath on this. Again, I will be taking the leaves that are dangling out because I, I like it better with the dome but now you can see that you can do that as well if you want things dangling down. Everyone's different, there's no right or wrong. You make it the way you want it to be. As long as you're happy, it's okay. <laughs> so I do thank you for hanging out with me. I, I have fun doing these for you. Again, as I shared, it's been a, a learning curve for me and I'm getting to where I'm comfortable doing these now. I also have another channel called um, Real Talk with Hallie. Just kind of kept it simple. <laughs> and it's where I go on there and I share life's lessons and what the Lord's taught me throughout the years. 
and if you want to check that out going forward I will have that in my description the link down there because it's a new channel I just started it but you're welcome to jump on there and check that out I kind of share what I've learned throughout the years just growing and learning from the school of hard knocks and just it's very casual and yeah I invite you to check that out So here I'm showing where I kind of left it where you can see that real pretty um, technique. On this particular one, when you do have a real pretty bridal bouquet holder, you don't want to hide it and camouflage it. You want that to kind of show out a little bit as well. But you also want it to be pretty and blend with your florals. And you want to be able to have your bride or your bridesmaids be able to hold that holder. You don't want it too bulky. So now we're going to go through and we're going to trim the ribbon down. Remember what I've shared is that you measure twice, cut once, and always leave it longer. I know a lot of us, we get caught up with, well, I don't want to waste materials. Well, if you have like a little material basket to when you trim things down and stuff, you just toss that in there. You're going to use that for other projects going forward. So don't worry about that. Uh, you want to leave it longer and then trim it up and frame it to how you want it to be. So there you go. This is my beach theme bridal bouquet. <laughs> I was inspired by another piece that I saw on Pinterest and thought, hmm, I can personalize that and make it how the bride wants. This one here is um, a real fun piece that I did. Earlier on, I shared how my granddaughter designed with her sister her bridal bouquet. This was a little thank you thing that I did to set on their table at their wedding. It was a little surprise for her. This is a bottle of Stella Rossi wine. And the reason I chose this is, well, because it was gifted to me. One, <laughs> thank you, Connie. <laughs> so sweet. Sometimes people will gift me things, and I'm not, I, I do drink wine occasionally, full disclaimer, but not that often, but it was just such a sweet gesture, and it is the brand that I love and stuff, but it was this really huge bottle, and I, when I got the wedding bouquet for my granddaughter, it was like, oh, wow, this, this is Nina's colors to the T, so I decided to take her wedding invitation that she had sent me. And I thinned out the back of it as thin as I could get it without ripping through it because I wanted it to hug the bottle and be blend into it. So I cleaned the bottle up really good. Here we're putting on the invitation after I've thinned it out. And that's the key is you've got to thin it out. you got to get that bulkiness out of it. And I have it really wet here. And I'm going to let it dry to the bottle like that before I put it on. So here I'm just molding it to the bottle, and now we're going to <clears throat> mod podge this onto the bottle. And because we had done her bridal bouquet, we had the flowers <laughs> that we could accent this bottle with as well. So everything matched. It was really cool because her wedding colors was black, red, gold, and white, basically. So here <clears throat> I'm showing Majwa. Learning curve alert. <laughs> I have to share this with you. After you do this, if you use, there's my beautiful granddaughter. If you use the Maj Podge and it's not the dishwasher safe Maj Podge, and you throw it in, <laughs> you throw it into the refrigerator to chill it down. It will uh, get cloudy on you because it will reactivate the Mod Podge. <laughs> so know that going forward. And if you do do that, it's okay because when you take it out, it will dry clear again. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I had a little meltdown moment on that one. That was a learning curve for me because I did use the regular Mod Podge on this. Going forward, if I'm going to give it as a gift, I'm going to use the dishwasher Mod Podge. That way that won't happen when you refrigerate it. Um, again, here's where you can get a lot of the supplies that I get. Again, I do not have affiliated links at this time going forward. 
I will sometime. I have been approached, but I just, I'm not there yet. I'm just not there yet. It's not about that. So I um, wanted you to know that. So here, if you're using the dishwasher Mod Podge, make sure that you're making this at least 30 days out before you want to gift it to someone or use it because it takes about 35 days for Mod Podge dishwasher to cure. If you're using just the regular Mod Podge, then it's fine. Mod Podge dries overnight. It's, it dries clear. It's, it's all good. When I use the sponge on this, because I use the matted, it gave it that frosty effect, and that's what I was going for on this. So you'll see that as we make this going forward. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm just wrapping the neck with the um, jute twine with the gold in it that matches the bottle. I'm all <laughs> I'm all about matching things up. I'm I'm funny that way. And then what I do is I use those corsage pins because they're long and they have the pearl tip on it. So I have those in supply. I keep those. I use those not only to do the corks on my wine corks to, to cover up that hole. I also use those as I'm creating projects. So that's holding that twine in place. I'm going to cover the entire twine with the Mod Podge. What I'm doing and why I'm doing that is as it's sitting around for years to come as a decoration piece, it's going to withstand the test of time. Mod Podge dries clear, it doesn't yellow, it doesn't crack. Yes, you can do cheaper ways of doing things, but it just, it stands the test of time. I cannot share that enough. There are other products out there. I don't know enough about them. I haven't gotten that far yet. And I am open to trying other products. But at this time, I know, and this is something actually my clinic aide shared with me years ago. She used Mod Podge, and she's the one that turned me on to it. So thank you, Kayleen. I appreciate that. Um, gave me some really helpful hints as far as crafts and things like that. So just by listening to her. It wasn't so much her giving me advice and stuff. It was just, just casual conversation that picked up pieces. So these are just different pieces of um, bottles and such that you will see on my bottle art playlist on Howie's Creations on my channel. So you can go on there and you can see how to make all these different bottles for the most part. So here we're just going to cover this up, seal it up really good, and let it dry. That's the key too when you're making things. Sometimes you kind of get ahead of yourself and you want to get her done. Give yourself time to let it sit for a day and dry. Come back to it. Make sure you have a little space where no one's going to mess with your stuff. And um, I know not everybody's fortunate enough to have a studio like I am. Um, and that came years after not having it. So I understand working in the kitchen table or at the counter because you're in a small apartment or whatever. Just find yourself a little spot where everybody knows don't touch that. <laughs> and you can have your little area there where things can dry and such. So we're just using the paintbrush here. That way the bristles get into the twine and such. You can use a sponge, but I think the bristles is better for this. So that's what I'm doing. And you'll see too on my table, I have matted and I also have the, the clear. So you can pick which Mod Podge you want. If you use the, the matted, it's going to have more of a flat finish as to where the clear is going to be more frosty and bright. So there's that. Also, I use the bigger bottles because I do Mod Podge a lot. If you are learning, just buy the smaller ones because it, a lot, a little goes a long ways. And that way it's not going to sit and dry on you over time. Also, when you're using Mod Podge, when you put it to the side, I take a plastic baggie and I put it over and then I put my top on just to keep it from drying out and keep it my. You don't want your lid to glue shut. <laughs> Been there, done that. So I put the plastic on and then I put my lid on. Otherwise, you would glue. So now we're using the sponge, and you can pick these up at the Dollar Tree or any hobby store, and they're um, great. They come in a little packet, 
for doing your um, appliques, also for when you're stenciling, your stencil sponges actually. And just go ahead and just, I'm tapping the whole bottle just to give it that frosty effect. Making it all come together because it will dry clear. It really does. Again, if you're watching this on Facebook and watching this on Howie's Creations, don't forget to like and follow. If you're interested in being part of the Hallie's Creations creative group, which is separate from that page, like and follow so I can send you an invite. And if you don't see an invite after a reasonable period of time, just send me a request because uh, sometimes I don't get that. I don't know why, but usually if you like and follow, then I will see that you're there and then I can send you an invite to Hallie's Creations page. So here we're just going to go through and dab the entire bottle. We're going to frost it all out for it all blends together. And yes, the wine is still in the bottle. So that's the beauty of this. It's like if you're going to go to a dinner party and you want to bring something special, you can still do this. And you can do it with um, the napkin art, the decoupage. You don't have to do it per se with the wedding invitation. This process can be done with pretty much anything. And you don't have to take the wine out. Just leave the wine in. And when you go, you hand it to them. They have this beautiful bottle. What I do, and you're going to see this towards the end, is I buy those lighted corks through Amazon. And I put it in a cute little bag with a little, you know, um, tag and such on it when I decorate it out. That way when the bottle's empty, they can drop that cork in there that has the lights on it and then you have like a night light or a little fairy light and the bot the batteries are replaceable as well so if you look on my amazon um profile page which is in the links down there you can see which ones i buy and you can buy different ones that do different things so you can get the colors as well as the, just the nice white lights you can get them where they blink where they don't blink they have different you know um, strobes and stuff so check that out because that's what makes it really cool my granddaughters took one of them home for their nightlight and my little nieces I gave one to them for their nightlight and they they love them so that they make great nightlights so if you need to justify buying a bottle of wine <laughs> there you go I, I'm buying it for I can make a nightlight <laughs> but no seriously Seriously, you can do it with champagne bottles. You can do it um, with the sparkling ciders. And you'll see that on my bottle art playlist. I have some where I've done it with Starbucks bottles as well as the small sparkling um, bottles for the holidays and such. They're so much fun. So check that out. And you can paint them. But here, here's the wedding invitation attached to the bottle now. And now we're going to decorate the bottle. Getting back to the project at hand. So here's a wedding invitation. It's preserved now. They'll have it forever. These are the lights I was talking about that I'm going to put into a cute little bag hanging off for when it's empty. They have a little night light. That's the little sparkling cider. That's the Starbucks down at the bottom there. That's the Starbucks bottle there. Um, if you're like, well, Holly, I don't drink wine. <laughs> I don't have bottles. All you have to do is tell your friends. That's what I do. I have most of my bottles, seriously, and my corks and stuff. I just do a shout out. People know now that I use these and they just give them to me. So I have an ample amount, more than enough. And uh, <laughs> people keep, my friends and family keep me in stock. <laughs> So there's always someone out there that's willing to let their corks and their bottles go. Um, I do have some friends that when they have unique bottles, they will save them especially for me to be able to do a share for you with. So here's her bridal bouquet that matches her um, bottle. And now we're just going to put a bow on here. And, and I just chose a real simple bow because that was the theme of her wedding. I, I didn't want to go all fancy. I just did a simple bow 
with, um, and, and in that little, you'll see the little dangle there. I put their picture in there too from when they were dating. <laughs> so thank you, Susie, for making those for me, those little tags. Um, a friend of mine makes those. Her name is Susie. And she comes up with some of the most cute little tags and such. So I kind of buy those from her for, I can put them on my bottles. I mean, I can make them too, but I like Susie's better. <laughs> this is a crafter helping a crafter out. So we're just going to place these on here, glue them on, and and now that we glue these on and make them all pretty, we will be done with this bottle. And then we will jump on to, I believe, the last tutorial share that I have for you, which is a painting with a palette knife. And I chose a real simple one to do for you. So that's coming up. This is my granddaughter here. This is her bridal table. Just showing you how simple and relaxed her wedding was and how that just fit perfect into that. My girl. I'm a proud Grammy. I think my, my granddaughter is beautiful, but I'm very biased. <laughs> She's our special blessing. So here I'm just trimming it up and we are going to finish this up. You'll get a good look at it and then I will be back to share with the final tutorial. Just remember, don't put this in the refrigerator if you're using regular Mod Podge. And if you oops and do, don't have a panic attack. Set it out and let it dry. It will be fine. Now we're moving on to palette knife painting. This is just a wild field of flowers on white canvas. What I've done is I did my palette knife, white oil, and I covered the entire canvas, just like you're frosting a cake. You don't need to make it all smooth. It could have the lines and the creases in it. That gives it character. And when I do my shares, my, my canvases, I like to do the edges as well because not everybody puts a frame on their art. So I always do the edges as well. So here we're just going to frost the canvas. Leave your oil. If your oil paint is a good consistency, you don't need to thin it out or anything. You'll notice over there that I am loading the side of my knife and now I'm dragging it with the stem colors, which is the green. And I'm doing it upside down. Here's two reasons why I'm doing it upside down. One, you can get a really good drag on it. And two, I painted my edges, so I want that edge to dry before I spin and flip it. So just relax, have fun with it. There's no right or wrong way of doing art. Art is art. As long as you're happy with it, don't get caught up with trying to do what everybody else likes. I'm going to be straight up with you. I just started doing my oils and my paintings in the past few years. I have spent my entire life raising my family, being a mom, being a working woman. I did take art in college, I had the opportunity to sit in and model for an art class, so I listened to what the teacher um, did, but I never really have taken a, an official painting class. I've taken a few art classes and business classes. That was my major, art and business. I just thought, now that I'm retired, you get to that point, what do you do with your time? And it's like, aha, uh -huh, I'm going to do the things that I put on hold. And that's how this all started. Um, most of it was just relaxing, getting into retirement, setting up a new life. And it's a whole other chapter. You have the empty nest. 
your kids are raised. Um, and it's, I've seen a lot of my friends go through, what, am, what do I do with my time now, Hallie? I go, do the things that you always wanted to do before. And now you have time to do it. And don't feel guilty about it. Just get out there and do it. Have fun. And if you're young and you're working and you have time to work all this into your schedule, go for it. Uh, my husband did not know I knew how to do this. <laughs> Because I had spent so much time. We were foster parents, and so that really took a lot of time going in and out of court, um, adopting our kiddos, and taking and just doing life and working a full time job. But there's only so many hours in the day. And my goal and my objective while I was a mom was to be there for the kids and my husband. Now I have time to play. And so I'm sharing that with you. I love doing the video editing as well. So for me, it's a win-win situation doing these channel shares. <clears throat> I get to do the art and then I get, to, I get to enjoy the editing that goes with it. And yeah, it's all, it's all good. <laughs> so this was inspired actually from a piece that I saw on Pinterest as well. Shout out to fellow artists that share their art. and They're not afraid of putting it out there because it does inspire and encourage us to do the same. If you are going to be inspired by another artist, I do encourage you to give them credit where credit's due. Just, just a little shout out. But Hallie, who inspired you on this one? I don't remember. I just know I saw it on Pinterest and I thought, I wanna do that. <clears throat> Another thing too is for me when we're traveling and we we travel back and forth a lot because our grandkids live in Washington and we're in Arizona and family is in California so I see a lot of roadside flowers <laughs> and that's what I loved about this is this is just the um, how I see the flowers as we're zooming down the road during the different seasons and, and such. So that's what this is inspired from as well. So now that we've flipped the canvas because the edge dried, I can do the top edge and now I'm going to add my different florals in here. What I would suggest is getting a little packet of your palette knives. I picked them up off of Amazon. You can get them again, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, anywhere, art store and stuff. Um, and just go for it. I And try the different tips, see what, you know you get from that this is the small little tip that I'm using to do the yellow stems with and I'm going to go through and do the entire bottom piece with my yellow stems and then I'll add other colors as well as we continue to build this out what you're going to do is you're going to load the tip and then drag so you tip and drag when you're doing the um, the full frost and here's why I have you frost the canvas and you can do this yes you can in any color you want you can frost your canvas with any color you want. I love white, and so I, I I use a lot of white. What I'm doing as I'm tipping and dragging these colors is I'm blending that white as I'm tipping and dragging. I'm pulling that up into the actual piece with my palette knife as I'm adding this on. So we're not just slapping color on here. We're actually pulling that canvas color up into the flower that brings it all cohesively together. So let's just continue to add color to this. We're doing the yellows and then we'll also add some more lavender and magenta and such. And down here on the corner, you'll see some different pieces that I have done. Most of these are in the oils as well as I do acrylic. So you'll see some acrylic in there and some glass painting and some um, inks as well. <laughs> so these are just different techniques. That's one of the first ones I did just to kind of get the feel for what I was doing. Remember too that you can do foils on your paints. That's what I did on some of those. I did the silver foils and this is just the black and white and such. So when you're buying your oils, be wise. Myself personally, I think it's good to buy the environmentally safe ones. I did use the old school oils and they are great but they give off a fume. Some of them do, so you have to be careful with that. And 
myself, I, I like the water-based oil. So you may want to think about that. You can look at my supply list on my Amazon profile page. Don't forget if you're on there just to give me a like before I know you've been there. And there's no affiliated links at this time. There will be down the line. I have been invited to do that, but I just right now I'm not there yet. So just know that those are created for you to have that convenience to see what I'm using. So now we're going to add some lavender on here. And then also when you want to do different um, florals, if you want to get a different um, push out with the palette knife, they have the flat, they have the tip, they have the round. So you want to look at that. The round for me, I like that gives you some nice petals. The tips gives you that, that whimsical whimsy type windblown type look and so there's this play with it and kind of see you know what works for you and what you're going for here these are just wildflowers on the roadside as you whiz by in your car you know you're looking out the window and you just see like spring coming forth out in the different areas I live in the desert but we do travel um, around to see family as I shared earlier so I see different flowers and different roadsides and it kind of just sticks in my head and then I'll come home and I'll just kind of put it down my interpretation of what I you know retained for the day <laughs> so this is the palette knife that has the round head on it that I just told you about gives you a different application technique and it just makes a wider petal There, I'm playing with the little butterflies because I do the editing on all my pieces here, too. That's part of what I enjoy doing about these shares is I enjoy doing the art or the craft or whatever I'm doing with you. Don't forget to subscribe and like. But I also like doing the editing as well. So it's, it's the whole package. Um, so you'll just see different things as I grow my channel and I get more experience in what I'm doing with the programs that I'm using. This particular editing program that I'm using is CapCut. And give them a shout out, CapCut. Um, this is the free one that they don't charge you for, if you can believe that. They do have a pro and you can get that. And I probably will down the line, but right now I'm waiting to see some more um, different features added before I invest that way and this is working well for me so this has been edited with CapCut it's been filmed off of my iPhone if you can believe that um, yeah <laughs> so you could totally do a YouTube channel if you wanted to if you have a, f a phone with a camera because everything else is it's just readily available out there and if you're older and you're trying to like, <clears throat> I don't know, ask your grandkids. They'll, they'll walk you through it. Mine did. <laughs> so they're the reason why I have this channel. <laughs> it's like, Grammy, record it, post it. <laughs> okay, show me how. So that's kind of how things got started through COVID. I've shared and I've shared that in the past as far as getting out there and just sharing the process with other people for they know how to do it as well. So help me build my community if you want to be part of the family because I do um, stay in touch with my subscribers and my followers. I think that's important. And if you do have questions, I'm doing this um, to help you along the journey and just to, for you can kind of know that it's okay to... Um, share and learn and create and just get out there and do it for me it's just um it's just part of enjoying life and and the tools that we have before us so don't feel like you're a good artist or a bad artist or a crafter or whatever as long as you're having fun in the process that's what counts other people's opinions that's their opinion and let it go, you know, get out of your head and just enjoy the process. Just have fun with it, totally have fun with it. So what I'm doing here to show you what I'm doing, having fun with it, <laughs> is I'm playing with my white paint again. I'm pulling that all up through my flowers. And you'll see that if you zoom in, how the, fl 
whites coming in through with the other colors. So a lot of artists, they'll, they'll blend their colors prior to applying it. I like to put my colors in as I apply it on the canvas. And sometimes I will blend it prior to to get the color I want. But here is just going for it. And you'll see my messy hands here. They're all covered in paint because for me, that's part of the process. I'm a TK person and I like to touch and feel. And it's easy cleanup. I just use baking soda, not baking powder, baking soda. And just one of those um, scrubby sponges. And it cleans my hands up. I don't have to use any harsh chemicals or anything. In the past, I've used Comet um, Ajax to get it off, and it dries and cracks your, on your hand. And I discovered baking soda. So when I'm all said and done, I just take some baking soda, clean up my hands with some Dawn dish soap. Dawn dish soap is amazing for cleaning your um, brushes and stuff and your tools with as well. And it's better for the environment. If you're on a septic tank or something like that, or even if you're not, you really should be aware of what you're running down the drain. So that's just something to share, going a little tidbit going forward. <laughs> so easy cleanup, you just wipe your palette knives with a towel. Just use an old towel that you were going to throw away anyway. Save those old towels, wash them up, and use them for your art room. Remember to um, pull your white up as you're doing or whatever color you're doing your canvas with to, to kind of give those colors, those blends. And I use Dawn Gist Soap to clean up my tools for the most part and baking soda to clean up my hands with a one of those rough, scrunchy um, sponges. And it does the trick. And you can get those nail brushes too and that'll get the paint out of underneath the nails and stuff if you get into it that way. Uh, you'll also notice too when I'm doing my paints, <clears throat> I put it down on glass and the reason I do that is I can cover it up with saran wrap, come back to it and use it again. And when it's all said and done and it's dry, I just blade it off with a razor blade. Easy peasy cleanup. And you'll see that on some of my different shares how I do that. So that's what works for me is I just like taking a white paint pen. And I just do my little HJ squiggle and done. I've also seen like, um, so what I've done is just take a little white pen, paint pen, and I do my little signature, my little HJ squiggle and done. And I've seen also different artists use like a pencil or whatever. So it doesn't have to be with a paintbrush or signature. It could be what you're comfortable with, the tool you're comfortable using, and, and the color you want as well. There's no right or wrong or anything like that. And then I do the full signature on the back in the year I actually created the piece. And in many cases now I do because I do the YouTube channel as I will put down uh, which YouTube share it was on as well. My art is available, the reproductions on ArtPal. If you are interested in buying a piece, you're more than welcome to go on to ArtPal. And that is down in my descriptions, the link to get to that. And I sell the reproductions of that. They do prints and they do canvas prints. So it's pretty kind of cool. And then if you're also interested in the original piece, just give me a shout out and let me know. You can actually look at that on ArtPal but I do have them where they're not for sale because I only have one each and I don't want to do a mass offering. It's only one. <laughs> I do one and I'm done. So I do it for the share and then I'm done. <laughs> so if you're interested in an original piece, reach out to me. The information's down there on how to get a hold of me. It's super, I'm super easy to get a hold of. And now going forward, we are going to continue to put the colors in here and just build it out and give it some depth and some dimension and make it pop. When we get towards the end, you're going to see where I take a splatter, a paint splatterer. You can do it with a toothbrush or you can buy one of those little paint splatterers. And I'm actually going to splatter some paint onto this just to give it some color throughout the whole piece where it's not just straight white on top it's bringing all the colors together so I dab that into all the different colors I've put on here and I sprinkle it just real a real light sprinkle and then it's done then I hang it up on the drying wall and I let it dry before I put it out to sell and that's the thing too I've had people reach out to me want to buy my art 
after I've done it and it's like, well, it needs to cure and it needs to dry and I'm not just going to throw it in the mill when it's not ready to go yet. So there is a time period where you do need to wait for it to cure and dry and be safe to mail to you. So if you are interest, interested in a piece, know that that's part of my process. I won't send out an acrylic art without sealing it first and that seal needs to dry for quite some time before it's not gummy and sticky. I want it to be perfect when you get it. So know that if you are interested in that. <laughs> and if you're making your own, know that when you're doing, I'm gonna go over just a real brief thing here because we're wrapping this piece up and then the, we're done with the tutorials. So if you're doing acrylics, you want that acrylic to dry and then you need to seal it to preserve it and to also give it the extra pop. So know that to buy um, the sealer for it as well. I know it's scary. The first time I sealed my acrylic painting, it was really hard because I was afraid it was going to smear and ruin it, but it just gave it luster and life. You can do um, the glossy or the matte either way on your sealants. I do have that, again, I keep on referring back to the Amazon. So look at my notes down below and you'll see the different things that I have to make it easier for you to find those things. For me, it was a lot of watching YouTube channels. Of course, I went to school for this years ago, but things have changed and then just trial and error. So I've tried to simplify the process for you. If you're doing glass painting, that's the same thing. I have a glass painting list. And a lot of my glass painting, I have the directions down there how you can bake your acrylics into your glass, as well as when you're doing the dimensional painting, the different paints you can use for that as well. And then there are, of course, you're, we're looking at the oils here. And then, yeah, <laughs> there's collage paintings. There's all kinds of different things you can do and adding the foils and such to it. It just makes it um, fun and interesting. So get out there, have fun, experiment, try the different mediums. I encourage you to do that. Mix your mediums up. So much fun to do that. Give yourself space to where you can hang it or put it aside for it could dry properly. And that's um, pretty much it for the six part tutorial. I do wanna encourage you, remind you, to go on to Hallie's Creations and subscribe and set your notify or if you're doing watching this on Facebook like and follow for I can send you an invite to um, join the Hallie's Creative um, group if you're interested in that. Remember there are so many different things that I have. I have over 500 videos and shorts on my channel that I've created just for you. Some are, <laughs> some are rough because of when I first started. But as time has gone by, of course, you grow and get better. And that's my goal is to grow and get better with you as we grow and get better together. So I'd love to see you subscribe. It's free. There's no cost to it. Now, if you're subscribing on Facebook, that's a different story. Just like and follow on Facebook. That's free. Subscribe and set your notify on YouTube. That's free. If you subscribe on Facebook, that is not free. And I don't want you to do that. You don't need to do that right now. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. So until next time, thank you for hanging out with me. I had so much fun making these videos for you. They are such a blessing for me. Remember, if you want to check out more about who I am and Hallie's Real Talk, I will have that link in the description as well as this is real easy to find. Um, but it's called Real Talk with Hallie, and that's where I share my biblical life lessons perspectives. I am been there, done that from the school of hard knocks. <laughs> so just share that process with you. So here I'm showing you some of the different um, oils and paints that I've used on this particular painting. And it's also showing you where you can pick up some of these supplies. And until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. I appreciate you sharing your time with me of all the places you could go on YouTube. You chose to hang out with me. Thank you. And I look forward to making neat stuff with you. And as my dad would say, have a good day and a better tomorrow. And until next time.
peace out. Look for those links coming up and you can jump on to the next share, subscribe, and notify. Bye.